Could you address how ChatGPT cites sources or doesn't and how to help students determine if the information is accurate and reliable? What are your thoughts there, Lena? Absolutely. It doesn't. Yeah. In fact, one of the quotes earlier, you'll notice there was no uh, there was no citation. It was just this nice, pretty slide with quotes. And I looked at it um, and the researcher in me, I'm like, where did that quote come from again? And I was like, oh, it, it must have come from all of my chat GPT responses. And so this goes back to having, again, the need for teachers being able to teach about citations, references, and whatnot. And if you remember the problems with Wikipedia, same thing. Yeah. I know with my students, I had to tell them, okay, don't just go on Wikipedia, get actual, um, you know, peer reviewed resources. And then we have to, we had to go through the process of teaching peer review. Oh, that's where chat GPT can come in. How do you, um, how do you cite your resources and where could you get more information on this? Yeah, and and just to add to that, even today I was I was playing around with it, and I ran it through a plagiarism check uh, because I just it just I was like this is just way too perfect. Uh, I don't remember what the prompt was that I was looking for, but I was like, let me just double check because I am from, you know I knew that there's no I mean I could literally see there's no citations, there's none of that stuff there, so I was able to do the plagiarism check. And it did pull up a couple uh, sources that it could, you know, had a percentage or whatever uh, of the language that I was getting in. And so I just double checked that as well. So, yeah, you will have, you know, again, this is artificial intelligence. And so at the end of the day, you will have to clean things up. You might have to change yeah. like some of the language that it was talking about in regards to equity. I was like, oh, I don't agree with the way that you're saying that. I'm not a big semantics guy. However, I'm not a fan. Like it was like talking about like equity, wow. equity work is rewarding. And I was like, I don't agree that equity work is rewarding. Uh, I think it's essential. I think it's significant. However, I don't think it's rewarding to do equity work. That's that sounded just too charitable to me. And, and I just like so. So there was language that I had to change. And again, I ran it through a plagiarism check. Um, and so I cleaned up some stuff. So it, again, it, I my my view on chat GPT for someone who doesn't like to write is more of it gives me a starting point. It gives me yeah. kind of some ideas, kind of helps me get going, kind of jogs that, you know, I just need, need a little bit of inspiration. And then I can put my own tweak on it. And I can put my own flair, if you will, so that it sounds like me. Um, but at least I'm not starting with a blank page because I struggle with just a blank document. No, I, I got something to work with and I can go from there. Exactly. Even when I went through chat GPT to create this presentation, it gave those, um, it gave these five things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. However, they were almost the same. Like the first one was access to information. Students can be able to translate their, um, their, their text. And then the second one was sources for multilingual learners multilingual learners will be able to communicate in multiple ways. And I'm like, you just said that in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to clean it up. So these are just some other ways to use chat GPT. There's some that we already talked about, for example, with our IEP and 504 flat, uh, plans, also writing your lesson plan. So I'm very curious about this uh, lesson plans by AI, because I'm very yeah. curious what they could potentially come up with lesson planning for me is not just a science, it's an art and, and it's the art of the relationships that you have with your students. So I don't think a cookie cutter lesson plan can be written. However, chat GPT can help you in those specifics, like find me a discussion prompt or what's a good assessment question or something like this. And then you can also, the very cool thing about it is that especially as we look at computer science, you can use chat GPT to understand code and programming languages uh, that can help students generate code as they're going through their coding assignments. You know, I got to give a lot of credit. Shout out to Gen Jennifer Brinkmeyer. I interviewed her yesterday. And so I have a podcast episode coming out on Thursday and she, she went into a lot more detail as far as lesson plans. She said she can literally put in the standard, whatever the standard is and ask to, uh, you know, write me a lesson plan for this standard and boom, boom, boom. You can even say, write me a standard for uh, this, you know, write me a lesson plan for this standard with a social justice lens and it'll spit it out for you as well. Again, right. got to clean it up. However, 
you have a starting point. So I, I definitely have to uh, give her credit for, she taught me a lot yesterday uh, with a conversation yeah. I had with her. So, and again, if you're in special education and, and, I, and I'll say, if you're in an inclusive classroom, we're all special education. Okay. I, 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 I like to make sure yeah. that we, it's not just the special yeah. ed folks. Right. Uh, so, so if you are in an inclusive area and whatever, you know, they're all our kids. And so getting that support, IEPs, 504. So even if you are a teacher and you're not specialized in those certain areas, if, even if you need counseling support, right. It was, uh, spe- social worker support, all these kind of things. I think all of those options are available when we're thinking from an equitable lens. So if I'm not as familiar, look, uh, maybe I'm dealing with an instance where a child is talking about abuse or, and, and I can't just the, the counselor's not available because they got 10 kids in there already, but I, Hey, give me some strategies. What should I do? How do I help? What some things I can say to help a student cope? I mean, to me, there's just so many uh, possibilities out there that are, that are really support you in, in these, uh, these times. Exactly. And there's a great question in the chat. Uh, have either of you used slides GPT? I haven't used slides GPT. However, looking at the PowerPoint presentations, if I use PowerPoint, uh, I actually got this from one of our partners. She was telling me, I know you love your Google Slides and, and Canva, look at PowerPoint. And so I started playing with it and you can just put the text on there and it will just make a slide for you. And wow. I, so I don't know if Slides GPT is like that. Yeah, I, I, well, I gotta, I'm gonna write that down later because I'm gonna play around with that as well. So in summary, this is, I think, where we want to gravitate towards using chat GPT as part of the process, having grade level text differentiating for our students, using it as a translation tool, connecting it to culture, to community, to the context, and, uh, and also just thinking about it in terms of the learning design, the learning process. Uh, one of the points that I made in the previous slide was about using test questions and having students generate test questions and then going in and using ChatGPT to answer those test questions. That to me is part of the learning, is part of the process. And it, it really fosters that independent learning that we want students to have, to take ownership of their own learning. Okay, yeah, in PowerPoint, there's an AI a uh, thing for presentation. Yeah, I'm going to check all the stuff out, you know. So thank you for 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 letting us know about the Dr. Dorf. Dorf. Yeah, they they told me I said like too much. I was like, "Thanks." <laughs> PowerPoint fine. <laughs> oh, I hurt your feelings sometimes, I guess. Huh? A little bit. 